Right, so the shellac has dried for, well, overnight. And now I'm going to hit it with the Crimson Guitars Penetrating Oil. At least I know the name of this one. That's a reference to the previous video where I couldn't remember the name of the protractor. Now the nut is the same width as the neck. I'm going to mark three mil from either side. And then I'm going to use the string spacing rule to find the string spacing. So with each file, I'm just going down to the line at the minute and we can finesse it once it's on the instrument. Always make sure you put a bridge ground in, otherwise you will have a bad time. There we go. So I've pushed the wire through, but because so soft when it came through the other side it actually blew out into the cavity so it just got stuck but before the wiring goes in I'm just gonna shield the cavity you can also see where it's blown out in the pine a bit that was what I was talking about with the wire. This is why pine is not my favorite word. like to put my fingers around a flathead because they do have a tendency to slip out of the slot and then then you stab a hole in your nice finished guitar and then you cry a lot talking from experience there we 
go. Just going to mark for the uh, direct mount screws for the P90s. Pop that in. Use one of the screws. Not whack it with the hammer, just a little tap so that I can see where that's marked on the inside of the cavity. Okay, so my dilemma is Ben drilled this hole before the neck was glued in. So the hole goes straight through here, through here, through here, and it comes out around here in the cavity. So I cannot fit three P90 wires through that hole there. So I'm either going to have to drill a new hole from here to here which I'm very worried about in the pine because, as you know, I think pine sucks and it's got really soft and really hard grain. And the last thing I want to do is slip or move or the drill bit wanders and I end up drilling like out the top or through the bottom. So this is going to be tricky. I'm going to have a little think about what to do. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark with tape where roughly where this P90 bridge is. If I just tape around the guitar and I'm also going to mark on the back the distance from the edge. So it's about 70 mil. If I just mark 70 mil on the back on the tape, I should be able to come in from this way is a little bit scary because you're heading towards the top but it actually gives me a shallower angle with the long drill bit into here rather than going from the top where I run the risk of coming out the back of the guitar which is not what you want at this stage I will cry and Ben will kill me so and, I'll be on my own. and then Sam will be all alone in the custom shop here we go squeaky bum time let's move the wire out of the way We're through. We did it. We did a thing. Right. I wasn't scared. You were scared. God, I'm still kind of shaky from the, uh, having to do the stupid drill hole and from uh, that really strong coffee that Sam bought me. Could do the wiring myself, but Sam will be faster. Right, one last thing to do before I hand it off for wiring is put the tuners in. Um, I suppose I could do that after wiring, but yeah, these have been drilled to 8.5 8 and they're just a little tight. 
little too tight. I'm just worried about hammering these in and cracking something. So I'm just going to ream them a little bit, half a turn. So, everyone's favourite bit now, wiring. <laughs> I can hear Matt laughing in the background. Um, <laughs> for this guitar, because we've got three P90s, what I'm going to do is still a pretty standard, simple layout. Uh, neck volume, bridge volume, a master tone control, and then well, it's like a blend pot for the, for the middle pickup. So, no matter what position you're in, um, this pot will blend in the middle pickup. Uh, so should give quite an interesting sound. Uh, we've got a barrel jack and then just a three-way switch up here as well. Okay, so, because we have to use these Clouson tuners, they are basically next to each other, so there is only a very certain way I can actually line these up. So they're going to be more in line with the curve. Okay, so what I've done is just put this one in place so that I can mark the others around it. I'm just going to work my way from the top to the bottom so that they all fit.
I said no. I, I, I. Hey. Um. Okay, so strings are on. As you can see, the pickups are a little low. We uh, should get some longer screws for those, but that might be a job for another day. Or later today, should I say. One thing that does need tweaking is the nut height. They're all really high at the minute. So I'm just gonna take those all down. Okay, so the guitar has been strung up for a few days now and um, it's come back to me. Um, we're just going to have a little touch up of a few areas that after we put the finish on we noticed weren't quite good enough because cause it's pine and pine sucks. <laughs> just cleaning up the glue splurge out around here splurge out is a technical term yes so it's really soft and it soaks it all up it's kind of annoying if you haven't gathered everyone i don't think you should make guitars out of pine right, let's see if some finish takes to that now gone on better but you can still see some areas that need a bit more scraping. It's a lot darker than it was before which means I've, it was basically all glue before. Hopefully our amazing editors can show you a, a before and an after. So another thing we noticed was that because the back plate is made of redwood and it's only held down with magnets, it has moved slightly, so it's slightly high in just these two places. So I may just add a couple of screws Call it four and a half mil in from the edge to the four and a half. God, the redwood's so soft, my pencil indents it. <laughs> I'm just going to see how these screws hold this down. See if I need one here, which I might do, just in the corner. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna do one more in that corner. There you go, that's more flush now. Right, so I've got the strings back on, and now I'm just going to go 
through each stage of the setup with you. The first thing we do is we check the nut height because the last thing you want to do is do the rest of the setup and then your nut's wrong because then your setup will be wrong. The way we check it here is push down the third fret and then you want to look for a slight amount of relief between the string and your first fret. So the D string could come down a little bit more. So could the G. So could the B. So could the E. The first two are fine. The last four need a little bit of work. Right. Now the nut's done, the next thing I'm going to do is not straight edge. I'm just going to check the relief on the instrument. So you're looking for a slight, slight dip in the middle. If you want to have it strung up to the tension, to the tuning that you want, so that the strings are putting the tension on the neck, you can check the relief before, but without the strings pulling, it's going to be different. So to adjust the relief, you need to adjust the truss rod. So I'm just tightening the truss rod a little bit. So the relief was a, it was a bit too much. I'm looking for around a mil in the middle. That looks good. I'm looking for the string height. So I'm looking for around 1.5 at 12th fret on the low E and 1.25 at 12th on the high E when I'm depressing the string at 1st fret. And both of those seem to already be perfect. Um, one thing we, we didn't mention was uh, changing the radius of the strings. Obviously, the radius on a tunematic is already kind of set. You can change it by uh, making the grooves deeper with uh, the same nut slotting files as you used in the nut. Um, but I already did that um, when I installed the bridge. So uh, Now, one thing I like to do to check the setup is what I call the luthier scale, which is just playing every note on the guitar. So. One last thing to do on the setup is uh, just adjust your pickup heights. Again, I'm going to use the string gauge. These are quite far away from the strings, but it might have to be that way as the screws we have may not be long enough. Yeah, that's as high as they go. <laughs> okay, so the old screws and sponge we're not cutting it so i uh have put some thicker sponge in there and some longer screws so now we are getting closer to where these pickups need to be in terms of height far quite beforehand they were around seven mil away and now they are at three which is a lot better a lot closer 
which Sam says is fine. So there we are, the end of a long journey. The Redwood SG is now complete. It is, so thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next build video or series or both. Catch you later. Bye.